It's Tuesday, and I'm starting a Dale Carnegie book club for fired Star Wars directors. Hello from LA, where we're turning to our old friend, J.J. Abrams, celebrating James Franco's Toronto triumph, and getting dish from Betty Davis's assistant. Paging J.J. If there was ever a franchise in need of a steadying, Obi Wan figure, it would seem to be Star Wars, which is shedding directors at a worrying pace under Lucasfilm president Kathleen Kennedy. Last week, Kennedy fired Colin Trevorrow from 2019 Star Wars, Episode 9 over a disagreement on its script, shortly after the departures of Phil Lord and Christopher Miller from Han Solo, a Star Wars story in June. Enter J.J. Abrams, who revived the space opera franchise to critical and commercial success with Star Wars, The Force Awakens in 2015. Deadline's Mike Fleming Jr. broke the news Tuesday morning that Abrams is in talks to fill Trevorrow's vacated seat on Episode 9, shortly after that, Disney made things official. In addition to directing, Abrams will also co-write the film with Chris Terrio, according to a press release. With The Force Awakens, J.J. delivered everything we could have possibly hoped for, and I am so excited that he is coming back to close out this trilogy, Kennedy said in the release. As VF's Joanna Robinson writes, though, some Star Wars fans had hoped Kennedy might hire either a woman or a person of color to fill Trevorrow's shoes, the massive franchise has never had a non-white, non-male director. director.ohave.f. Skady Rich writes the Midnight Madness section at the Toronto International Film Festival has long hosted some of the festival's most at their screenings, but it's never been quite as meta as it was on Monday night when James Franco debuted his film The Disaster Artist. Franco directed and stars in the film as Tommy Wiseau, the star and director of Ultimate Midnight Movie The Room. A work in progress screening at SXSW earned good buzz, but the word out of Toronto on Monday night was effusive, and the energy spread online Tuesday morning when distributor A24 released a full-length trailer, which you can watch here. In theaters December 1st, the disaster artist has virtually none of the hallmarks of a typical awards play, but the passion surrounding the film is hard to overlook. A24 and Franco also have a good history together, he was at the center of their first awards campaign, for Spring Breakers in 2013, and netted a good number of critics' prizes for his efforts. Four years and a Best Picture win later, A24 has proven they know how to channel enthusiasm into a full-throated campaign. Tommy Wiseau, your moment of glory has arrived at last. Your daily dish. F. Hillary Busis writes There's no gossip quite like first hand gossip, and that's just what you'll get in spades in this juicy interview with Catherine Cermak, who served as Girl Friday to the incomparable Betty Davis during the Oscar winner's final years and just wrote a delicious book about the experience. Cermak was actually born Catherine, but Davis told her to change the spelling of her name to make it more distinctive. Tidbits like that are sprinkled throughout Cermak's conversation with VF contributor Marcy Bianco. She contends that Joan Crawford hit on Davis on the set of Whatever Happened to Baby Jane, that most other Davis biographies are bunk, and that despite what you may have seen on Feud, the real Davis was an unmitigated champion of women working together. Also, in case you ever wondered, this is what happened when Betty Davis got angry, she would say Mared, and, if she was really, Really, upset, you got the silent treatment. And there's nothing worse, because her eyes, they just go straight through you. IT follows F. Slara Bradley rides thanks to the huge success of it, a sequel is all but inevitable. The film's already highly anticipated follow up has not yet received an official green light, but plans for it are moving forward all the same, especially since the first film's young stars will likely need to shoot their scenes for it soon before puberty makes it impossible for them to do so convincingly. So what, exactly, do we know so far about its second chapter? Director Andy Muschietti will likely return, a couple of the losers will probably die, and although a release date isn't certain, 2019 is reportedly a safe bet. This is not my beautiful house. F. Johanna Desta writes I've got once in a lifetime stuck in my head, and it's all Alexander Payne's fault. A new trailers has officially dropped for Downsizing, the director's latest feature, and it's set perfectly to that classic Talking Heads track. The story follows a couple, played by Matt Damon and Kristen Wiig, 
undergoing a procedure that will permanently shrink them down to 0.0364% of their current size. Why? Because shrinkage has some truly glorious benefits. In the downsized world, their regular money will inflate, their house will expand, and everything will.